Today I will be um, alerting you several times. This is specifically towards the Harrisburg folks and the Raleigh folks. That the Harrisburg folks have lab in Charlotte tomorrow evening for, from 5 to 9 p.m. You will need to bring your Raspberry Pis. Um, and you will also, if you want, you can also bring a box in which you're going to build a video game rig. And the same thing goes to those in Raleigh. Your lab is 10 to 4, I believe, on Saturday. You also need to bring your Raspberry Pi. And if you have a box that you would like to place your video game console in, go ahead and bring it, like a cigar box or a cool looking um, cardboard box or anything of the sort. Um, we are going to be using the laser cutter down in uh, Charlotte on Saturday. So when will the Charlotte times be? Um, your labs for Charlotte, I believe, are going to be the same. I believe y'all are going to just have your labs next week at the normal time. The question, um, when will I be in, at Latin in person? Um, I will be on Saturday at Latin, but from 9 to 12, I'm going to be teaching a different class than yours, but I will be there from uh, 12 to 4 for you all. The question, do you have to bring a box? Um, not necessarily, but if you don't, I think we're going to be using just plain cardboard, which is not a bad thing. I mean, you can always paint it, um, but just, you know, a suggestion. Um, I'd re recommend also bringing for the Raleigh folks, I'd probably bring a lunch if I were you, but we're going to be sending an email out to everybody with directions to Charlotte Latin. Um, I think y'all are going to have a great time this weekend. So I will be there, at least for Raleigh folks. So um, I'll see you there, just like normal. <clears throat> so before I get started, were there any questions on what we did last class? Because I know we did go a little bit quickly. Um, but don't worry, I will be showing you um, a review on what we did last class. Any questions? No questions? All right. I've seen a couple Space Invaders games so far and got them look pretty neat. So we're going to keep uh, making them look even cooler than before. All right. The question is you can't find your Space Invaders game. All right. So you are on the, um, the Scratch website, right, Andrew? And what you're going to do hopefully unless something weird happened and it didn't save it should be when you click on your name in the top right should be underneath my stuff if it's not under my stuff I'm actually going to send you um, a link to mine for you to download. Um, yeah. Did you find it? It's not there? Huh. Occasionally it won't, won't save for some reason, unknown to me. So what I'm going to do... It sends you the link to mine, um, which is my very basic one that we'll be working more with today. Okay. Hopefully that will fix that problem there. Um, I think that's everything good. All right. So we made a very, very, very basic um, <laughs> Space Invaders program last class, um, which just involved having, you know, a spaceship that could go left and right, um, an alien that I believe is just, I believe it's going, it's, let me double check this, but 
an alien that's going right and then down and then left. It's about letting you click and go to it. Um, there should be at the upper right-hand corner, it should say see inside. Does it not let you click see inside? It's not. Are you logged in? And this is not there. This up here. Oh, the link that I sent you isn't working. Um, let me check something real quick. <clears throat> I'm going to see if it's on my side or your side that that's happening. Uh, can anyone else verify if this link that I'm sending out is working or not for you? I just sent a link out for the chat. Because if that doesn't work, then I'm just going to have to have you start from scratch, if you will. <laughs> Okay, cool. All right, so we just had a single alien going back and forth. We have a laser that can hit it, make the alien disappear, but keeps on going up, 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 up. So today what we're going to be doing is fixing that, making it so the laser disappears when the alien is hit. We're going to add several different um, aliens that will sort of move together back and forth. Not in a line like snake, but just all the time at the same. Um, I'll show you what I mean in just a second here. <laughs> um, we're going to be adding some lives, and we're going to be adding a game over screen. All right. <clears throat> so let me go. That's my other one. Let me go over everything code-wise that we did last class. This is a whole bunch of junk code that we didn't actually work. Um, but for the laser beam... We have it hidden once we start the initial uh, game. We want it so that when the space bar is pressed, our laser comes out directly out of the top of the spaceship, hence our go-to spaceship. We have it going in a 90-degree direction, which according to Scratch should be towards the right, but due to the orientation of our laser, we actually have to turn it. Because if you don't turn it, your laser will just be a block going the wrong direction. We then have a, um, a non-infinite loop, a finite loop, which tells our laser to go up by 10. And then the laser will hide. That's the code for our laser so far. We've got the same hiding Initialize for our spaceship. When our backdrop switches, our um, sorry, my, our spaceship is going to go left and right <clears throat> depending on how we press our arrows. So left arrow goes left, right arrow goes right. Yada yada yada. Nothing new there. For our alien, we had to set two different uh, difficulties. We broadcasted easy when we press 1 or hard for 2. We set our speed to 2 for easy or 15 for hard. And our direction is going to be speed. Sorry you're late. You didn't get an email. I'm sorry about that. I thought that we had sent it out to everybody. But you're okay. Just go ahead and open up your Scratch game. We haven't gone over anything new yet. Um... Was I? So we set our alien's initial position, 
we change it by whichever direction we had set earlier in our uh, script. We made sure, oops, this is something, I guess we did go over score. Um, we have our alien hiding if the laser hits it, and we have our alien's position, um, sorry, we have something to check our position, and that check will make our alien go the opposite direction and drop down for both easy and hard. So remember, you're going to set your direction to negative 2 and 2 for easy and negative 15 and 15 for hard. <clears throat> we then check out our stage um, code, which will initialize our first backdrop when we click on the green flag, and then broadcast something depending on which num numerical key we entered in. So for one, we'll broadcast easy, we'll switch our backdrop and set our initial score. Same thing for hard, but with the two key. All right, so any, quest <clears throat> any questions on that so far? All right. If you do, just go ahead and let me know, and uh, life will be grand. So what we're going to be working on next, um, even though my PowerPoint is telling me to add multiple aliens, I think it'll be easier for you to do this other stuff first before we add more than one alien. And I know some of you already have, and that's great. That's I want you to work ahead if you can, but I also want you to learn. So, uh, so yeah. So let's go ahead. I'm not going to go over that quite yet. Um, the first thing we're going to do is hide our laser beam when it hits the alien. So we're going to need to go to our alien sprite. And this is a fairly simple piece of code here, what we have to do. We're going to go into events and broadcast and put that inside the if touching laser loop. We will need to do this for both easy and hard. And we're going to broadcast, let's say, alien hit. Oops. <clears throat> so obviously I have not yet um, coded a collision, so it's just going to keep going once it runs through all its code. But that's all it is for that. But we will need to do one more thing. We'll need to go into the laser sprites code now. So click on our laser. What we're going to do is check and see if our um, check and see if the laser is hitting the alien, it's checking to see if it receives the alien hit, and we're going to do something very simple and hide it. So we're broadcasting, we're sending out to a different sprite that, hey, alien hit it, or sorry, the laser hit it, and we're actually hiding the laser um, based off that. So it's a very simple piece of code, not sure why we didn't add that earlier, um, I feel like that's kind of a kind of an important thing. <clears throat> so that's all for that one. So just for a reminder what we did there, 
all we added in our alien code during our check to see if it's touching the laser. We broadcast that it was hit for both easy and hard. When the alien hit is received, we will then hide it in the laser sprite um, script area. So let me give you just a second for that. Because the next thing we're going to do is a little bit more fun. That's just a bug that we fixed there. All right. So now we're going to make some lives, make um, a lives variable. And with this lives variable, we are going to um, <clears throat> eventually be making a game over. Screen, all right. So we're going to go ahead and make a new variable called lives. So you all remember how to do that. Go into data. Make a variable for all sprites called lives. See a question? Yay! Nicely done, Wyatt. All we've done so far is program our um, laser to disappear when it hits the alien. I can show you how to do that a little bit later. We'll have some free time at the end of class today. But what we're doing right now is making a variable and calling it lives. And what we're going to do first is initialize our lives. We're going to set our initial amount of lives. And for this purpose, just to be nice and Nintendo-esque, let's do three lives. So we're going to put that underneath, switch backdrop to, within our stage um, script area. So this one, a nice initial uh, sort of deal here. But there is so much more than that. So much more. We're going to need to go into our spaceship now. We're going to detect... If an alien is touching the spaceship, and if it is, we're going to deduct a life. We're also going to reset your game. So that's two different things we're going to do in some weird code that I have included down here. Um, this one is if touching color. So this is going to be in our spaceship um, within the forever loop. So let's add an if statement in to the forever loop. Now, the touching color is kind of a weird um, operator here. What it's going to do is check to see whatever background color your sprite is, if you have one. So for mine, for example, my alien is on a black background. Yours might not be black. Yours might be, you know, clear or red or whatever. 
There's other ways to do this, but I'm just doing it this way to reduce my code. Ooh, what was that? So what you're going to do, if you have these default sprites like I do, you're going to click once on the little color swatch right next to the word color. Your mouse will turn into a, a finger pointer thing. Then I'm going to click on the background of my alien, which just so happens to be black. I could also click anywhere on here where it is showing black. So what this is doing, it's checking to see if it's touching the outer side of our uh, alien. You can also do it if it's touching your alien, um, whether your alien be white, red, green, whatever. I'm just doing black since I do have a background. I'm then going to decrease my amount of lives by going to data and change lives by. We're going to set that to negative one. So what this is saying is if the spaceship is touching this alien, we're going to change our lives by negative one. Decrease one life. But if we had multiple aliens here, um, these aliens would be continuing to go on downwards after it would touch the um, spaceship. So we're going to add a new broadcast variable here. And we're going to call it reset. So the intention here is to get our aliens back to its initial position so that it doesn't just keep going side to side and underneath our spaceship here. So we're going to have to code this reset uh, option that we have. Unfortunately, there is no reset built in to scratch. So we actually have to do something to work around that. And that's when we go into the aliens code and add this right here. When you receive restart, go to X is 30 and Y is 25. And that's going to set it to its initial position. And that's going to be in the alien, um, alien sprite. Or, so when I receive reset, to 3025. And so why don't we test that before we go any further? Remember, we've already set our amount of lives. So every single time that an alien hits our spaceship, it's going to lose the life and go back to its initial position. So let's, let's see if it works. Lost one life, two lives, and notice how it's going back to its initial position, three lives. But we have not yet set this to do anything once we've lost all our lives, so it's going to continue decreasing our number of lives, and that negative two lives, because, you know, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> all right. So 
Well, let's make something happen when we're out of lives. Your alien won't move anymore? Huh. Um... So, Andrew, make sure that you have an initialization, meaning that make sure that your alien is going to move in the X a certain direction. The question by Hannah was, it goes to the right, goes down. When it hits the other side, it goes back up. Make sure in your piece of code where it says X position is less than negative 140 that you are changing Y by negative 20. Okay, so you have that. Um, what have you added? Did you add everything to the code that we've done so far? Will you share your code and then send the link to yours so I can see it real quick? Yeah, um, could you go up to the upper right corner, and beside project page, you should see a share button. Go ahead and click on that, and then send me the URL at the top of your screen. Is anybody else um, losing connection? Can you all see or hear me? Are we all good there? Okay. I don't know, it seems like you're alone in that. It doesn't have a share. Can you go to File and then Save Now or Save as a Copy? All right, do that. And then there should maybe, if you're lucky, be a share button. <laughs> and if not, you can probably just send me the URL at the top of your screen anyway. It might work. We'll see. It doesn't have the same things in file. Uh, huh. Oh, does it say remix up here? Is there a remix button? Hit remix if you do see remix. Okay, hit remix. And then you should be able to either share that or send me the URL.
<laughs> exactly, Wyatt. You died, here's your grave. So let's go ahead now and work on a game over screen. We're going to need to go into the spaceships code. And we're going to add an if statement. We're going to say if it's telling you to check the confirmation message for it. Um, you should be able to send me the URL now and I should be able to see it. You probably don't have to worry about checking the confirmation message. And if you do, I'll figure something out. You might need to check your email and confirm. URL, all I have to do is um, copy and paste it at the top of your screen. Copy it here and then paste it in a question. So we're going to be using an if statement to check how many lives we've got. If we have less than one life, which means we have zero lives, we're going to hide our spaceship and then broadcast something new. Something to indicate that you died. It won't let you paste in the questions, not even a right click. You can also try putting it on Edmodo. Or what you could do, Andrew, is you can just, um, oh, okay, there we go. Let's see if we, this will work. Oh, man. It says it's not shared, which means you have to confirm your email first. Um, what I want you to do for now, Andrew, is seeing aliens won't move. You're not the only person whose aliens won't move. All right. So let's see here. So, Andrew, I, wa I want you to just continue working with this um, and then I'm trying to think. I guess I'll have y'all. Can both of y'all just share your projects on Edmodo once you confirm your emails by giving me the URL, and then I can test it out myself and see if, what happens. At the end of class, when we have some um, free time, I'll go and do that for you. Just bear with my or bear with the code for now and I can fix that. <clears throat> so we've added a live checker to see if we are dead. And now what y'all can do is create a new backdrop that will indicate if you died or not. So for me, I just used the default and wrote you died on it. So let me see if anybody's, any of y'all posted your thing yet. I did see... 
We have Space Invaders. Can you tell me which lines make the alien move? You might be missing them. Yes. The lines make the alien move are, if you go into the alien scripts, within the forever loop there are three, or, the, or sorry, within the forever loop there's three things to look for. There's this change X by direction. There's if X position is greater than 140, then set direction to negative 2 or, you know, negative 15 and change Y by negative 20. And then there's if X position is less than negative 140, set direction to 2 or 15 if you're on fast, change Y by negative 20. Did you remember to set your speed and your direction as well up here? Hmm. So, looks like can y'all post the link so I can take a look at it? either in Moto or here. I can't see yours, Andrew, just because you need to confirm your email. But I hope everyone else has made a fun death background. I did in my other um, game. I'll make one real quick here. It's not the one I meant to pick. Oh well. And now we got to add only a couple short little pieces of code. This right here is going to go into your um, backdrop script. So when I receive, you did. Did I forget to do that in this one? I totally did. your question. <laughs> oh man, you so dead? You're super dead? Heck yeah. Let me fix mine real quick. I forget. Your mom's trying to get, to get to Edmodo because you haven't been there before. Um, if you don't want to use Edmodo, just confirm that link in your email that came from scratch, and you can send it to me here. 
<laughs> yes, it should be your dead. I'm just being silly and weird, I guess. And finally, you want to hide your alien. So when you receive said hide. Did you want this right here? Got one more thing to go over involving more aliens. Just double checking yourself, that's fine. Can't blame you there. We're gonna add some more aliens up in here. Could I click the spaceship? Yeah, why? Do you mean to move it or to get it to shoot or? Oh, you mean this. Duh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So we're going to add some more aliens now to our game, but uh, real quick, we're going to do our aliens in a certain way. Um, I'm going to show you real quick this game, which is a good game. There's nothing wrong with it at all. I'm just showing you what, wow, it just, this is going to sound terrible no matter what I say. I'm showing you what we're not necessarily looking for. So... Watch the aliens, how they move when they turn. So notice, oh, it looks like he fixed his game. Or maybe he didn't. So you see how they're moving like they would in Snake? How they, like, they curve around? What we're looking for is the whole block of aliens to move at the same rate back and forth. Okay. You don't know your username for Edmodo. I think that's something that you have to make. And we give you codes for that furthermore. If you'd rather, you can also send it to my email.
It's saunders.yeot at gmail.com. So let's make a whole bunch of aliens that will go at the same rate, turn at the same time. Um, what did I do with the one I have? It's right here. All right. So this first alien that we've created starts at 30, exposition of 30, and then 25. So it's starting about, you know, right here. Let's duplicate this alien. And we would like to move it 30 feet to the left. What would my X and Y coordinate be if I move if I wanted to make an alien that moves 30 feet to the left? Or that starts 30 feet to the left, I'm sorry. Any ideas? Well, yeah, I'm saying we have our initial alien starting at the coordinates 30, 25. But we would like to move our second alien 30 feet to that one's left. Well, okay, you can drag it. What I'm trying to get y'all to do is switch your go to X to zero. So 6025 was a good um, good thought. That's 30 feet to the right. So what we'll need to do for the second alien, and I'll check that in just a second, all right, Andrew, so I can take a look at what's going on with it. So for the second alien here, you'll want to change all of the go-to X's from 30 to 0. You'll have three of them. You'll have one under easy one under hard, and one under when you receive reset. But that's not all. We will also want to move the X position in our forever loop, in our if statements, 30 to the left. So our new X position check, oh, you're totally fine, no worries. Your new X position will be 110. I haven't checked yet. Um, I'll check it now. And your other X position is going to be 140 minus 30. Oh, Andrew, you still need to check the email that you use to register for a, for a scratch. I'm sorry. So your new coordinates are going to be X position greater than 110 or less than 170. So let's see that in action. They're going at the exact same rate now. So 
So how would I make another row of aliens above that? Any ideas how I can do that? Thirty what? We're just going to change our y coordinate. You're you're right with that. I'd actually probably change it to maybe fifty. Um, Thirty is going to have your aliens overlapping, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But if you want to do a row above that. You can copy both of your aliens. And change all of your Y coordinates to 50. Now it says Google doesn't recognize it. Do you have a couple seconds to stay online after um, your webinar? After the webinar, Andrew, so I can take a look at it. what I'm doing. All right, I'm sorry. I do. I will be uploading this um, this lesson, so you can copy from there. So I'm going to copy my alien. I'm going to switch every y coordinate up to 50. There should only be three. Let's check it out. We could also stagger our aliens if we wanted to. So we can change our X coordinates just a little bit. Stagger it by, I don't know, 15. So let's change our X's to 15. I mean, 125, then negative 155. Ninety-five. I'm getting all confused. Why aren't I? Let's see. Yeah, I'm a little bit off there. Negative one eight five. There we go. So hopefully you should have a decently working game now. Um, there's all sorts of other stuff that we can do to make it more interesting, but we're more than likely not going to worry about doing much more um, with this just because you're going to be making your own um, pairing will have. You're going to be making your own game sort of box. Um, I see a question. Can I play it again? Yeah. So notice how they're moving. perfectly with each other.
So for the last couple minutes of class, I'm going to let you freely design your games. If you don't think you're going to have any questions for me, you are free to go. If you do think you're going to have questions for me, go ahead and stay online. And Andrew, please stay online too. Yeah, no worries. I hope you had fun, the Space Invaders. You take care, Wyatt. One of yours isn't doing that every other row. It's going a little farther to the right than it's supposed to. Um, that's going to be an issue with your exposition greater than whatever. Um, decrease the number that your exposition is. So instead of, you know, 100... 40, make it 125 or something. Alien 3 is going to need to go to 15 and 50. Oh, X, yeah, 15, comma 50, X, 15, Y, 50. Alien 4 is going to go negative 15, comma 50. Alien 3 is going to go X is greater than 125. Alien 3 is going to go X is less than negative 155. Alien 4 is going to go X is greater than 95. And X is less than negative 185. So just a reminder, Harrisburg and Raleigh Scott Lab in Charlotte this weekend, or Thursday and Saturday, rather. Bring your pies, bring your pies, bring your pies. This is number three right here. Number three is 15.50 for your go-to. Exposition's greater than 125, less than negative 155. 